Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I believe we have had a wonderful conversation and that something positive is coming out of this meeting. I want to thank you most sincerely for the work you have done this past year to sustain the faith, hope, and physical well-being of our people at a very difficult time. When Corona reached our borders and all looked lost, you gave us a reason to hope and a reason to believe that our one and only God will not forsake us. And indeed, God has been on our side. The worst the world predicted for us has turned into a false prophecy. You know, those miracles that God did to his people in the Old Testament, the miracles he enabled in the New Testament, the miracles God has done to me personally and to my family, I believe God continues to do them to individuals and to our country to this day. I am a beneficiary of God's mercies and miracles. So many times I'm left speechless when holier-than-thou members of our country say that Rail Odinga does not believe in God. And what about Tender Wildi? Who will not believe in God and his miraculous way after going through what I have personally with my family gone through? Who would not believe in God after seeing men and women he was in a struggle with, being assassinated, seeing comrades disappear without trace, or seeing his comrades immobilized and eventually made to die, a slow and painful death rising from torture? I have witnessed, witnessed all this. I have gone through all this. And I believe I'm alive today because my God lives and walks with me. And I seek to walk with him. As you all know, in one of my famous escapes from this country, it was the Catholic Church who came through for me and helped me avoid what I had been warned would be my last arrest, after which I would not live again. How would one not respect the church or the Almighty after such miracles? Let me share once again a story I already shared in my biographies. There was a time in my life when the Bible was the only book available to me, apart from the Quran. Those were my years in detention. In that period, when everyone else out here had choices on what to read and who to listen to, I had no options. The Bible and the Quran and the prison chaplain and occasional letters from my wife and children were all I had, day in, day out, for years, not days or weeks, years. The prison chaplain would come with the Bible and other religious publications, including old religious newspapers, and move from block to block. In a situation where you are deprived of freedom, the Bible becomes a great solace. It offers a very valid hope that there's life beyond the present circumstances. It did for me back then. It continues to do that for me today. I had the King James Version in English, Swahili, and also in German. For those of you who don't know, German is my other language. In that period, I also read the Quran back to front and back again, from Alif Lamim after Al-Baqarah. 
alone with my Bible in prison and, and the Quran, I came to the conclusion that the decisive event in the Old Testament is not the creation. Great as the creation story is in establishing God's supremacy over the universe at the work of his hands. I remain awed by the story of the Exodus. This is because I believe the story of creation is a certain second information because nobody was there when God was creating Adam. But the story of Exodus is a story told by people who were themselves there, present. That story of the flight of a people from slavery to freedom with God's guidance. And that flight from slavery to freedom never came easy. There were 40 years to be endured in the wilderness. There were people telling the Israelites to abandon the journey to Canaan, the promised land, and to return to slavery because of, in slavery, there were some short-term goodies, like occasionally eating meat, which was not available in the wilderness. And then, there's the depressing side of that flight, that some of the people started blaming the leaders who were leading them to freedom. The Exodus offers us the story of visionary and determined leadership, like that of Moses and Joshua, who were clear in their minds that it was better to endure short-term discomfort in pursuit of long-lasting benefits of freedom of their people in a land of their own. That is the journey we should be on today as a nation. That the journey I'm calling on you today to help us rally our nation to stay on. I believe it is better for us to endure short-term discomforts 